Hello everybody, welcome to the cluttered basement and today I take you through my $250 budget build that any average Joe can do in the any average Joe fashion. Stay tuned! Today we're going to build a computer out of this Think Center for anybody who's thinking about uh, getting into gaming, PC gaming, or video editing. For 250 bucks, this is how you do it. All right, here we go. Let's start with some unboxing. All right, guys, we're going to start by unboxing this uh, Think Center computer I got from a recycling place on eBay. I paid $89.99 and got free shipping. This computer comes with a 500 gigabyte mechanical hard drive. We're going to add a 120 gigabyte solid state drive, uh, another 4 gigabytes of RAM, and a uh, pretty budget friendly GTX 1050 2 gigabyte video card. So this will be able to take you through some budget PC gaming along with some video editing and I'll take you through that as well but first we have to get all this bubble wrap off this machine um, they really didn't want uh, this expensive computer to get dinged up during transportation which is good I guess but could have saved a little bit on uh, shipping pack materials but it'll give me something to work with later if I decide to sell it So, still unwrapping it. And here we go. There we go. All that bubble wrap. Don't know what I'm going to do with it now. Alright, let's go through the project list. Right here is the $89 computer I got for free shipping. The RAM I installed because it only came with four gigabytes of RAM. The hard drive, or I should say the solid state drive, I got it on sale from actually Newegg. And last but not least, the GTX 1052 gigabyte video. Alright, now we're going to add a four gigabyte stick of RAM because it only came with two two gigabyte sticks of RAM and we need at least eight gigabytes of RAM to do any serious gaming and or video editing at this time. So here we go, slap her in there and then you can see we actually have another expansion slot left so we can actually add another four gigabyte stick or two gigabyte stick later, preferably four gigabyte because you want to keep the same dims of the same size and speed. On to the next project. All right, now we're going to have to replace the thermal compound on the CPU because I bet you it's original and it is hard as a rock and not going to be able to transfer the heat from the CPU to the heat sink. So we're going to take our Phillips head screwdriver and we're going to unscrew all these screws, all four of them, and we're going to replace that thermal compound. So let's see what it looks like. There's one screw. Okay, here we go. Unplug the fan. And we're going to unplug a few other wires just so we can get everything out of the way. And there we go. There's the thermal compound. And as you can see, it is hard as a rock and not coming off. All right, all we're going to need is some hand sanitizer and paper towel. Just uh, squirt a little bit on the paper towel, rub it around, and uh, get that thermal compound off of the CPU. And just make sure you put your hand on the side of the case so you don't uh, electrocute the motherboard with static electricity. And just uh, make sure you get it off. The longer it's been on there, the harder it is to get off, so just be patient. It takes a couple minutes. Once you get it cleaned off the CPU, we're going to need to do the same thing to the heat sink. Just spread a little bit more on a paper towel and clean it off. And because of the design of the heat sink, you're going to have to make sure to clean off the paper towel fragments when you're done. Just blow them off and you're good to go. So there we go. Run your finger over it real quick when you're done just to make sure you got it all off. Got it nice and clean. Finger, good. Got it all off. 
We're going to take the thermal compound, arctic silver. Yep, there we go. We're not going to put too much on there, just about the size of a pea. See, there we go. And then we're just going to take the heat sink and put it over top of that. Make sure your wire is facing the right direction. Push it on and then tighten her down. Do one screw. Don't drop your screwdriver. Go to the opposite corner to make sure the thermal compound spreads correctly and then just tighten her down. Uh, on this motherboard heat sink combination, once it's tight, it stops moving. So you don't have to worry about over tightening it, which I love. Idiot proof it a little bit for me. That's what I need. It's good to go. Make sure you plug in your fan controller there. And we're going to plug in the heart, mechanical hard drive, which is, comes with a 500 gig hard drive. We're going to use that for all of our games. And we're going to use this SSD for the operating system. Pretty simple. Find a spot for it. You're going to need a SATA cable. I already had one sitting around, but you can buy one online for about two or three bucks. Just put it anywhere. We're not going to use any kind of special holder because, you know, any Joe Schmo would not even worry about it, so I'm not going to. I can see all the computer geeks hitting that dislike button already, but yeah, they'll get over it. You don't need all this fancy stuff. Okay, hard drive uh, secured. <laughs> Now we're going to move on to the video card, which is a GTX 1050 2GB that I found online for about, uh, by the time I shipped it, about $125, not $200, $125, bucks, which is the bulk of this budget. But you don't want to skimp on the video card. It's the big, big component. There's the old one off. Toss that. Don't need it. Here's the new one. There you go. Gigabyte. Single fan. Just going to push it in there. Make sure, because it is a dual slot, just take one of the expansion slots out. Pretty simple. Push it in there to hear it click, and then just uh, clamp her down. Since we don't need any uh, external wiring, we don't have to worry about it. Power supply is rated for 280 watts, so we should be good. We'll make sure to check it later. Alright, here's an overview of what we got. At the bottom, we got a 1050 video card, we got a new thermal compound on our CPU. We got the mechanical 500 gig hard drive hooked up for our games, and we got the solid state drive just thrown in there, but it's not going to move as long as we don't throw the computer around. And our 280 watt power supply. Feel free to slow this down. This is just how I create my USB installation drive. So just go to this website, click download tool now. That window will pop up and you just create the installation media on a at least an 8 gigabyte USB stick. I'm assuming that you guys have an 8 gigabyte USB stick laying around or USB drive. If not, you could borrow one from a friend. So then all we really need is an operating system on the computer. Um, you guys could even use the Steam operating system that is free. And if you want to see that, let me know in the comments down below and I will create a short video on how to do that as well. In the meantime, this is how to, to create the installation media with a USB drive. We're going to make sure to create installation disk on USB drive, and then you can actually check the checkbox and select 32-bit or 64-bit in any language you choose. USB drive, or you can actually burn a DVD. Your choice. I like the USB myself. And then once you get your installation media created, we're just going to plug it into the front USB drive and hit the power button. Alright, and since we don't have an operating system on the solid state drive or the hard drive, it's going to boot to the USB automatically and it's going to install everything. And it's going to look pretty close to this. A lot of waiting, a lot of loading, but once it finally gets done, we'll just run through this setup real quick. United States, you know. English, all that, yada, yada, yada. And I make sure to turn off all my tracking, which is uh, right here. No, no, don't want that. And then we turn all these off. So, two, 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 two. Just because Windows 10, in my opinion, is way too nosy. So, onward and upward, here we go. This may take several minutes. Thanks to the magic of editing, we're done. And you can set it up however you want to. Everybody's got their own thing, but I just download like something like malware bytes for antivirus and then just install Steam after that. Right, wrong, or indifferent, that's how I set it up. And uh, here's a quick overview of what goes on. 
I also took the liberty of pre-downloading uh, the GTX 1050 video card update or drivers and uh, I'm installing that before I even connect to the internet because it's just a really good idea to make sure Windows 10 doesn't install the wrong ones. This process takes a few extra minutes but in my opinion it is well worth it to keep Windows 10 from screwing something up or operator error which is usually my case. Alright, a few hours later we got everything installed and here's some of the 3D Mark results. Firestrike did pretty good at 5560. Firestrike Extreme 2992. Time Spy 1878. And then here's some gameplay. My favorite game is Subnautica and Counter Strike Source, which is pretty old, but it gives you a good general idea. We're playing Subnautica in 1080, medium to high settings, low on motion blur and ambient light. And uh, let's get into it. We're going to run these uh, together in the same frame to save some time here. So as you can see Subnautica loaded up pretty quick because of that SSD drive. And in my opinion during this game it it played really really well except for maybe a few dips here and there. And Counter-Strike Source is so old that it would play fine on anything, but it's just nice to have a, a second game for this low-budget YouTuber to compare to. So, And it'll come in handy in our next build, which will be an even lower spec machine, I believe. And as you can see in the Subnautica game, it runs pretty well. I'm sure if we took it uh, one step below a 1080, we would be seamless and get some really good frame rates. Right now we're getting about 60 frames per second with dips down into the 30s and sometimes even into the 10s. The more animals that we have in the shot, the smaller the frame rates are, the lower the frame rates are, but in my opinion, very playable even for a very new game. And Counter-Strike Source, as I said, is so old that it would run probably on a 1 gig card. And we have a 2 gig 1050, so we're good there. But if you guys have never played Subnautica, I definitely recommend you check it out. Alright, next we're going to check to see what the loads are, see if there's any bottlenecking on the CPU, and I'm using Furmark to stress the GPU, and as you can see, we're bottlenecking at the graphics card, which is good. We don't need to be bottlenecking at the CPU. That would mean that we need to upgrade our CPU. So it's running as, as good as it could. All right, and you remembered earlier in the video, I mentioned that it has a 280 watt power supply. Well, even under load with CPU at full and GPU at full, we are only using 188, 189 watts. So we have plenty of room left. We can either upgrade uh, the RAM, add another hard drive. Um, I don't think we can upgrade the GPU with the current power supply. We would need to get another power supply because of the additional power that the GPU would need. But uh, this is just a good overall $250 budget PC that will do just about anything you want it to within reason. As far as video editing, as you can see, I did some editing with this computer on this video. And it went pretty good. Um, I'm using Adobe, Reader, Adobe Premiere. And the secret to using an older computer and getting it to work well is creating proxies on here. And if you don't know what a proxy is, that's fine. I will probably create another video later on on how to do simple editing in Adobe Premiere. If you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments down below. If not, let me know in the comments down below. This is just a general overview of what this computer can do as a budget PC build. Once we get everything laid out, edited, and 
where we want it we're going to add some stabilization to the videos and as you can see there it's applying it just fine during this process we used 100 percent cpu use for quite a while and it did not overheat and did not crash which is good that means we don't have to upgrade our cpu cooler i know things are getting a little more complex in this segment of the video but this is for all those computer geeks out there that are asking the question hey what can this computer actually do versus what you want it to do so in my opinion it did pretty pretty well I'm not going to use it as my go-to computer but it's definitely something to get your foot in the door if you want to start a YouTube channel or a gaming PC can do a little bit of everything just fine and if you want to do more video editing you can add that extra 4 gigabyte stick of RAM because uh, you do use a lot of RAM during video editing or you could upgrade the GPU if you want to be more in, uh, into the gaming section of things um, but overall it is a very good PC for the price we paid for it, about 250 bucks alright that's it for today's video I just have to sit back relax and enjoy your new budget PC build don't forget to comment down below, like if you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you liked it, and hit that auto notification bell at the end. That's it for today's video, and I'll see you guys next time. Alright buddy, it's time to go. You gotta make the next video. Get off my lap. Come on buddy. Alright, ten more minutes. <laughs>